All right, everybody, we're going to be talking about AI for SOC teams. Uh, and this is about enhancing incident response and vulnerability management. As has been said in a number of uh, talks previously and, and the, just the last talk here, uh, it's not going to be able to do everything, but there are a number of things that it can do uh, to help our SOC teams be that much more efficient uh, and handle the tasks that they need to do. So a little bit uh, about me here. Uh, my name is Taharka Beeman. I am the Global Security Operations Center Manager where I work. Uh, I'm in the live events and trade show industry, so a little bit uh, like this here, being a conference. Uh, but I've been working with the SOC team uh, that I'm with now uh, for about four years, focusing on incident response, vulnerability management, system hardening, all of the kind of traditional things uh, that you uh, might see from a SOC team. Uh, but I have been in uh, IT and security for over a decade here. So as you'll see at the bottom, a number of certifications and things as well, if that's important to you. So what we're going to talk about here today, we're going to talk about um, how AI can help in some of the SOC team's core functions. So that's going to be asset management, security agent monitoring, um, incident summaries, scripting and code creation, threat hunting, malware, and TTP research. Uh, as this is a lightning talk, I don't have time to talk about all the different things that AI can and, and has done uh, for SOC teams that I've seen and experienced. Um, so some of those things we won't get too deep in or won't dig deep into or presentation creation, uh, internal documentation summarization, and of course, all of those things like privacy and regulatory concerns. Uh, I'm sure that's uh, another talk. So first things first, something that everybody can probably um, understand and, and has experience with, and that's asset management uh, and security agent monitoring. Something that's important on the incident management side uh, and on the vulnerability management side. But one of the major challenges for asset management is really understanding the inventory data that you have uh, and being able to do complex queries to understand everything you need to know about the, that inventory. So. Um, systems that are either misconfigured, missing security agents, uh, rogue hosts, disconnected hosts, all of those kinds of things. Uh, so you'll see an image here for a tool called uh, ThreatAware. Um, it will actually do both uh, asset management and security agent monitoring. Uh, but the reason why it's here and why I wanted to talk about it is because it does do natural language processing. So as you're trying to gain insights from the inventory data that's in there, it's as easy as asking a question. So you can say, show me all the hosts that are missing you know, XYZ agent. And the neat part about it is that it will give you the query um, that uh, it will actually use with all of the correct parameters and all the correct formatting that you can save and use um, and share amongst your SOC teams uh, for future use. Uh, so that natural language processing and being able to speak to it like you were talking to another one of your analysts um, is really where the benefit uh, comes in. Uh, and, you know, if anybody who's been on a SOC team, you know that we have uh, a number of different tools that we use, um, and they all use slightly different uh, querying languages. So this is really going to make it easy, not just for the junior analysts, but all of the analysts on your team who are possibly juggling uh, a number of different querying languages. Um, they can just talk to this particular tool and gain the insights uh, that they need. Next up here. We're going to be talking about AI for identity uh, and access management. Uh, and that's going to dovetail into user uh, entity and behavior uh, analytics. So where it started here, and I do have to give, I guess, a little bit of a shout out to IBM uh, for some of these quoted uh, definitions here. Uh, but user behavioral analytics um, deals with data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to really understand what your users are doing on your network day to day. Um, and creating a baseline of that normal activity. User Entity and Behavioral Analytics, or UEBA, takes that one step further and is looking at more than just your users, but also the devices uh, and the apps to understand their normal baseline behavior. And why that's important is because is once you have that information, you can understand whether there's slight devi deviations from normal behavior, um, and that can kind of key you in to something being wrong or it's a malicious actor being on your network. Um, so again, one of the outcomes that are listed here in the slide for you is that you can use this UEBA to really understand if somebody's gotten past your perimeter defenses. Uh, let's say uh, they've compromised an account uh, and they're purporting to be uh, a true authenticated user. If they're taking all kinds of actions that a no that normal user would not do, these systems would allow you uh, to see that and they would alert uh, on that after seeing uh, enough of that deviation from that normal baseline. 
more so than that, that use of that AI and that pattern matching that machines can do uh, is unmatched by humans. So it really is one of those things that we want to use. And it really is using and harnessing the power of what the machines are, are great at doing is seeing and going through large amounts of data and finding those little slight um, changes there that might key you into something going wrong. So to talk about a few of those identity and access management tools um, that you might see this in, big name company there being uh, Microsoft, their Entra ID, formerly Azure Active Directory, um, it does have this tool built in. So all of that e, um, uh, UEBA um, and behavioral analytics, uh, as well as their, all of their Defender for Cloud apps uh, and those tools that look at the kinds of uh, things that your users are logging into as far as SaaS services and things of that nature. Um, that um, behavioral analytics is in there, as well as as I used IBM's definitions, um, I should mention that their IBM Verify IAM tool does also have this capability as well. So what kind of alerts and, 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 and things might you see uh, in that monitoring tool? Well, you might be familiar with getting an alert for logins from a new country or from a, a malicious IP or impossible or atypical travel uh, for that user, again, using those baselines. Or it can even do things such as understand when users are uh, accessing, possibly when they haven't before, uh, sensitive files and things that are labeled as sensitive uh, inside of your environment. So again, I mentioned before, it, it could be, uh, as far as a use case, somebody has compromised uh, a user's account, so they are logging in with the correct username and password, but just the actions that they're taking day to day don't line up with what those baselines have seen. Again, some of that, the activity that those hackers might want to do once they're on there are things like uh, lateral movement or other things that are uh, defense evasive to EDRs and other tools. Um, so again, you'll be able to find out that information through um, this baselining and that normal user activity. Um, and again, if your in internal users um, should go rogue and uh, start any kind of insider threat, um, there is their history of what they've been doing in their normal roles um, day to day. Um, and then there is what they might uh, be doing once they have uh, kind of turned sour. So we can find those insider threats as well. Uh, just to highlight the picture on the left there, uh, that is uh, from Microsoft, uh, Microsoft's Entra tool, and that's a risk score for users. So again, it's not going to necessarily alert every single time somebody does something a little bit different uh, than what they've been doing before. Um, but what it will do is it will raise that risk score ever so slightly every time they do something that just doesn't comply with what they've been normally doing. And once that risk score does hit a certain point, that's when they can start raising alerts and, and things of that nature for you to do some of that deeper research on that particular user. Perfect. So next we're gonna talk about AI for endpoint detection and response. So kind of one of the key tools in incident response uh, for SOC teams. And there's a number of different things here that you'll see um, that endpoint detection and response tools uh, can do. The first of which being automated incident summaries. So really taking the who, what, when, and, and, and where and why uh, of an incident and describing that to all level of analysts for just easier understanding and a secondary way of uh, displaying those summaries uh, beyond what would have uh, potentially been in your tools previously. From there, I can do uh, remediation recommendations. So letting you know what's the next thing you can do to contain uh, this particular threat, how to further investigate, or any other um, uh, remediation requirements that may be required on that system, on that uh, identity. And then there's also uh, co-pilots for contextual as assistance inside of EDR tools, uh, a number of them. So again, just like we were talking about before with natural language processing, it will allow you to ask your EDR um, uh, questions, just like you're talking to another analyst. Um, you know, show me all of the hosts that have incidents today, or show me all of the users that have logged in over a given period, which we'll see an example of actually in just a moment. But similar to user and entity uh, behavioral analytics, what endpoint detection response tools have inside of them are something called behavioral indicators of compromise. So what it can do is 
Similarly to before in the IAM side, it can look at the kinds of files and folders um, that your users um, are accessing on a daily basis. Um, it could look at the kinds of processes that run on those systems uh, and such. And when it finds deviations from normal patterns, um, it can start to raise the risk score and or raise alerts uh, directly within that uh, endpoint detection and response tool. So just a couple of examples, just to show everybody what I'm talking about here. Um, it may not be too easy to see uh, for everybody in the room, but uh, when you see the slides or for the people online here, you'll see on the right side, um, there. this is uh, Microsoft's uh, Defender for Endpoint tool with their security co-pilot uh, built in, in this example. And you'll see uh, along the right side there, um, there's a full incident summary of what's happening in this particular business uh, email compromise case. Um, and again, it just outlines for junior and senior analysts exactly Exactly what's happening in this particular incident. But what they really need to know is what they need to do next. Uh, so along the right side in this particular example, um, you'll see uh, the guided response and or some of the recommendations on what accounts need to be looked at, what systems need to be looked at. Again, uh, some of those containment steps that can be taken and or some of the further uh, investigative actions that can be done as well. And then last one, one of my favorite uh, examples here, um, again, I, I talked about understanding and knowing a bunch of different querying languages for all of the different tools. Um, so you'll see uh, this particular tool uh, is using uh, KQL uh, by Microsoft. And what this is saying is show me all of the devices um, that have signed on within the last hour. So you can just ask that question as if you were talking to uh, another analyst, another human, and you can see that it outputs the KQL query, which you can then build into longer scripts and or use as is, save for later, and share with your team, uh, and so forth. Cool. So going even further, uh, how to use AI for malware and uh, TTP research. So there are a number of publicly uh, available chatbots uh, that you can use um, to find the uh, information uh, on malware families or tactics, techniques, and procedures. Uh, and ChatGPT is probably one of the more famous ones. So I wanted to provide an example here of it um, giving me some information about a MITRE attack technique, uh, something that we all use. Uh, sometimes you might just get uh, a MITRE attack technique number, uh, such as here we see T1059. Uh, if you pop that into ChatGPT, um, it will give you a full explanation. In this case, uh, you'll see it's PowerShell, which is our friend some of the times, but also uh, the friend of the adversaries uh, some of the time as well. So it will explain to you all of the different malicious ways um, and things that it has documented on how this particular technique is used in the wild, um, and then what you can do as far as mitigation and detection um, techniques. Another good example uh, to mention uh, is Google Gemini. Again, just one of those um, freely available um, chatbot uh, and generative AI kind of tools that you can use to ask questions and get information back. So if anybody hasn't used some of those publicly available tools and wasn't sure how well it would handle uh, security and, and technical type questions um, in our realm, um, it absolutely does so um, quite beautifully. Um, and again, you can see that it will cite uh, references from MITRE uh, and other reputable security vendors uh, that you can then go and look at those sources and read further and truly understand where uh, the response that you received actually came from. So in conclusion, how does AI help SOC teams? So firstly, again, that natural language processing makes querying and understanding d data easier by reducing the need to really understand multiple different query languages or master multiple query languages for multiple tools. So just ask the question and ask for the data that you want and these tools can respond. Machine learning and AI can detect complex patterns and behavioral indicators of compromise way better than humans can. So even if you wanted to dedicate a whole team to sifting through data and finding um, minor anomalies and creating baselines uh, and finding anomalies from those baselines, um, still these uh, ML and AI tools uh, will likely beat out uh, your human tools, uh, your human teams rather. The AI generated summaries and remediation 
suggestions um, really provide guidance to junior and senior analysts. So it's not something um, that's just particular to one part of your team. Really, everybody will learn from the, the recommendations that the tools are providing, and then they'll use their internal knowledge to then um, go beyond that um, and understand your organization to go further and, and what they need to do to get that closed out. And then lastly here, uh, security focused and general purpose AI chatbots. So whether it be the Microsoft Security Copilot or ChatGPT, they can answer the cybersecurity questions that we have uh, day to day. Um, and again, as we've seen, as they are incorporated into the different tools that have context of our environments, they can use that information about our security posture, about our infrastructure to give even more robust answers um, to the questions that we ask it. Thank you so much.